business person, you know. You know, it's not, I'm a music, I sing and I write. has a fantastic quality to it it's just something it really it's quite indescribable i mean it just is it's just fantastic when i get out of the mode out of the music mode i can very i very easily slide into the let's go climb a mountain mode uh, i think peter is a likable relaxed intense perfectionist That was pretty important, you know, one of those things, you know. Uh, but I think even more special than that was the Chicago kind of, what it was called, our comeback at the time, 16, you know. Hard to say, I'm sorry, when that went to number one, and it was like, <laughs> we'll show you. I'm totally proud of my album, you know, I'm just, I'm totally proud of it. And so, that whole experience, I'm just, you know, looking forward to doing again, you know. In this edition of Cover Story with singer, songwriter, bassist Peter Satira, we're going to find out why it wasn't a big mistake for Peter to leave the group Chicago and go off on his own. Born and raised on Chicago's South Side, Peter grew up in a large, close-knit family and started out playing the accordion. By the time he reached high school, he was a professional musician. In the late 1960s, Peter Satira joined the Chicago Transit Authority, which quickly became the simpler name group, Chicago. And for the next 18 years, Peter was part of one of the most successful music groups in the world, singing, playing bass, and writing such hits as If You Leave Me Now, Stay the Night, and Baby, What a Big Surprise. Now as a solo artist, Peter's already had two hits from his first album, and once again is thrilled about who he is and why he does what he does. It's kind of like this family of the south side of Chicago. Nowhere to go but we would sing in the house. So. And um, kind of in that thing we were, you know, we were a musical family, you know, we did, you know, Christmas carols would always be, you know, oh it's Christmas time, let's sing. I took uh, um, accordion lessons. That was like the polka prodigy of the south side of Chicago, you know. I knew every polka ever written by heart. I mean, I could, I was just, you know, and I think I got a transistor radio for a Christmas present, and then I could get all the stations, and I started getting it, you know, the rock and roll, and uh, yeah, and I, I would always kind of, you know, you start singing along, and then you go, hmm, I think I could be a singer, you know, and then I uh, go to high school, and, you know, uh, you see a band perform, and you go, I think that's what I want to do. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I guess the way a lot of groups, you know, happened then was like, you know, metamorphosis. You just, just kind of, this one thing you meet and then this thing meets. We were, we were all in various lounge groups in Chicago. I was, I was in a group called The Exceptions. As it turns out, we actually worked at the very same time at the very same club, alternating days. And I didn't know him back then. And we were at the exact same time in Chicago, yeah. He was with a group called The Exceptions. And I won't tell you the name of the group I was with because it's absolutely silly. But, I mean, we, we worked like, I think we worked uh, Tuesday through Friday or something like that. And they worked Saturday through Monday. I, I don't remember how it worked. But uh, I found out, we found out that we were there at the exact same time. You know, after the uh, uh, British invasion happened, you know, and, and 
and then it started to happen here in uh, San Francisco and everything. And the top 40 group that we were wearing the suits and everything was was going like this and this other group that were writing things and doing different arrangements started to happen in chicago and and it happened in the form of this other group called the big thing that were friends that had uh you know gotten together and they were looking for a bass player that could sing and it was just kind of like oh yeah you know and then i joined them and um we did various gigs around town, uh, and um, six six, uh, six months later, uh, you know, we're we're on our way to California. What? <laughs> yes, we have to pack up, and we're gonna go to California. And we're gonna make a record, you know. It's kind of like, let's go, guys, you know. And so we packed up. My packed up the Volkswagens and, you know, drove out to California. You know, we were living with those songs. When we, when we came out to California and Bobby was, you know, would lay these songs on us and we, you know, rehearse them. We, we'd, you know, live all in the same house and keep going over these songs. And so, you know, it was kind of, when the studio came, we just kind of went in there and, and, and did it in a, a, you know, a, you know, a few weeks and we had this whole album. I think we did more tours, more one-nighters than, you know, we were, you know, we were young, we were just, out, we didn't, people didn't want to hear us, they didn't even know about us, you know. I mean, you know, you, you can pay your dues, and I think paying, you know, paying our dues got us that first kind of wave of followers that bought that first album or two or three, and, and I think, you know, music moves through things, and, and all of a sudden we found ourselves without uh, kind of, you know, a group without a country, I mean, nobody, you know, record companies, you know. You know, you get kind of a little bit of a reputation, you know. I mean, I think we were the, the hottest working band in show business. But we had a lot of fun, you know. And we did pay our dues. I don't think everybody... I wouldn't be so mean as the, as the wish that on everybody, you know. Because it was a lot of hard work. But in the process of that, it's a lot... recognition you know and you know I got a lot of recognition with Chicago but I, I still had the recognition as Chicago you know Chicago you guys are great what was your, what was your name again you know who did who wrote that you wrote, uh, you know and it just I just wanted some recognition you know for you know, for myself. I mean, I realized after years of, of, of holding it in that that's really what I, what I really needed. But having that Chicago mentality of having a job and you better keep quiet finally got to me, you know, how do I leave the group? I mean, I've been with them for so long, you know, it's like it was a marriage, you know. And it was hard and it was scary and, you know, uh, kind of putting kind of that final thing, all right, come on, you want to do it? Go ahead. You know, mentally, you know, it's like, okay, you're on your own, pal. I'm on my own. Oh, boy. So for about a day, it was just utter panic, and then the second day was a deep depression, and the third day was, you know, what's going on? I think it was a, a natural extension of his ability. When one member begins to contribute more, possibly, uh, it, it became apparent to me that he was practically doing the whole, the whole thing, and not to diminish Chicago in any by any means, but uh, it, you know, it, it became apparent to me that, that he needed to to stretch out a little. Uh, now, whether or not that meant you know you leave the group, I don't know, but who knows? But uh, evidently, it worked for him. When I write a song, I never think of anything except writing, except singing and something that I, I, I like and I love actually you know whatever comes after that it's just like oh yeah yeah I got it you know so I mean I never write people say well do you write a song because it's going to be you, you know you want it to be on the radio no, no you never think about that I don't I mean I just think about God I love 
I like the way this line, you know, whatever happens afterwards is like, wow, it's like this, you like this, what do you like, you know? I like that feedback, you know, but in the end, you know, to have the ultimate decision is somewhere between, you know, sheer agony and euphoric, you know, it's just, it's wonderful, you know, I mean, I, seeing that on my first album just kind of set up, I can't wait to get back in there for the second album. You know, Peter's been at this for many years. I've been producing records for many years, and I guess the the desire to make quality product doesn't leave you, but how you do it <laughs> changes, you know. You, you stop putting in the 18-hour days because uh, the frenetic feeling of deadlines, the reality of the fact that you seldom meet a deadline, so you say, hey, relax, man, let's just get it done, let's get it done right. And, you know, so I, I felt that that was important. When you start to put together a video, you know, you try and surround yourself with the best, you know, with the best people, and you just kind of go, hi, here's the song. Now, listen, this is kind of what I, and then you just kind of bounce back and forth, and, you know, usually you just, you know, you give your ideas, and then you kind of step back and let the guy do his thing. on that one really I I didn't have all, that much say in it because they you know they had to use clips from the film because at that point it was like the first single off my album and Peter Santera's solo and you know I wanted this you know so I said when you when you show me singing you know the part where you're showing me if you could just put the camera about this far away from my face and let me sing the song and feel the song because I can feel that song you know because, I mean, it's me. When I do an album, I want to write all the songs. You know? And a friend of mine said, hey, man, I just wrote this song for you. And next time I fall in love with a song that uh, I said, you know what? I, I think it's a duet. I want to turn this. I said, Bobby, would you mind terribly if I turn your song into a duet? And he went, man, you could turn it into a polka, you know. Go, you know, whatever you, sure because I always wanted to do you know, something totally left field. And I, it was left field. Because everybody's going, Mark, Amy Grant, isn't she a, a gospel singer? What is she doing, you know? So um, I got somebody that was a real nice person, somebody that could sing, and somebody that was a, really nice to look at, and somebody that was like, not the obvious duet choice. write a song for a video. Big Mistake was really the only song that I've, I've done that because, you know, it was going to be for a, you know, movie, TV or whatever. I, I think of a, a little part of a song and it's just, and then you start calling people up, hey, what do you think about, would you want to write a, and that this whole thing just kind of starts, you know. We just f uh, finished up the video for the third single off this album, which is kind of a, diametrically opposed to the first two singles. Uh, first two singles were, you know, the, the quote, Peter Cetera killer ballads that everybody can relate to. Big mistake, it's kind of, you know, it's the opposite of glory of love. I really like him. He's relaxed, intense. I mean, he's like a dichotomy of people because at one moment he can be totally relaxed, the next moment he can be really intense into, some, into a conversation. He's extremely funny. He's got a cynical, wry sense of humor that I particularly like. You know, uh, Peter's a funny guy, you know. And uh, he's just fun to be with.
it was so funny yesterday because I'm shooting the video, and here's the, here's a band in front of you know, and about three or four takes into it, it started feeling like, boy, this is fun, you know. I mean, I'm a natural born ham. Something about the camera, you know, always gave me this. You know, you just, you know, the camera's tough, you know. Some people are just can just look right in the camera and just. So I took a few acting lessons, and then this this split with Chicago happened, and, and you know, nothing ever came of anything. You know, once I was solo, I did, we, we just moved up to Idaho. You know. So that's where I live, and that's, that's something that, you know, that's right up there with doing my own solo album, you know, always being up in Idaho. Because I have, you know, I have a lot of friends up there, and, and, and I love it up there. I like L.A., but, but, you know, having a daughter and, you know, a few years back I found, you know, I found Idaho, and it was like, you, nothing beats having a baby girl, you know, that's three years old and this goes... Daddy, that's my daddy singing. I mean, that's just like, to me, that's the greatest thing. You know, I'm walking into, into a store and we're shopping and my song comes on the radio and she goes to somebody, that's my daddy. I mean, that's the greatest, you know. Tara is really sensitive. I mean, he's wasn't real verbose. You know, I mean, it was the, he's a real natural person. It's sort of like you didn't have to do a lot of. We, we, he used to joke, well, "Let's rap," you know, because we'd love to talk and hang out after the show and stuff. And uh, I got really close to Peter, and he was just really, really very warm. Natural, yeah, you know, very, very natural, you know, very very natural person, mm -hmm. and I, I I was a big fan of his anyway. I, I still am. I, his voice has always sent me into orbit. I'm happy that I'm still here. You know. Uh, not that I feel ancient, I, I mean, you know, you just need that little space, then you can adjust to everything and realize that the people want to hear those old songs, you know? I mean, I'm, you know, I'm proud of all those things, you know, wishing you were here and all those things, you know? So I think after I finish the next album, it'll be, uh, I don't know, I may not even wait that long to get on the road because it was so much fun yesterday with the, you know, with the group here, you know? So uh, I think that's kind of like the next thing, you know? I think my, my goals, uh, kind of immediate goals, are, are just to just to start living, just, just to be happy. I'm, I'm kind of, uh, you know, it's taken me years to get to this position now. I, you know, I want to enjoy it. I want to savor it. Murphy and